On our final episode of Out of the Shadows, we go behind the scenes of Sportslink's broadcast of the Eastern Michigan game. We check out the highs and lows of the Bowling Green game, and we see what's in store for the team after this season. Out of the Shadows starts right now. You know, I know our win-loss record doesn't show it, but we've made a lot of improvements. You know, I, I think our culture is a lot better. Uh, when I say culture in the, in, the, in, the, in the realm of, you know, our work habits, um, you know, our work capacity, um, guys know what to expect when they're walking into practice. You know, there's, a, there's going to be an intensity level. They're going to be held accountable. Uh, you know, I think certain guys have made individual improvements, which has been good. You know, you look, look at a guy like Chris Bond from last year to this year. The guy's making threes, he shoots threes, he's a three-point threat, he's playing with a lot of confidence. Um, you know, a guy like Franco House, you know, Xavier Turner, those guys are getting invaluable experience as true freshmen. You know, so we've made a lot of strides this year. I think the culture's developed. Certain guys have individually got better, um, you know. So I know the win-loss record doesn't show up, but as a coaching staff, when you watch film every single day of practice in each game, we see ourselves getting better and better. We're, we're much better on, on, uh, on offense right now than we were earlier in the year. We've, we've, we've progressed in that area. You haven't seen a lot of the progress we've made because we've, what we've done is we've lost a ton of close games. But, um, but I feel like we've gotten better in that area. I feel like our culture has gotten better. Practices, guys come to work every time they go. There's been no quit at all. Continue to compete and play hard. And, uh, and I think those are real important benchmarks or kind of foundations for us to to get this thing started. Coach has been around for some really, really good coaches. Uh, Sean Miller's one of the best in the business. Obviously, he's with Charlie Coles. He's been around Stan Van Gundy, Stu Jackson. So uh, he's been around it. He's seen it. Obviously, he didn't play it, you know, at the Division One level. But he's been around enough to, to, that he has a feel. Uh, he understands, you know, what, what guys go through. And, you know, I think that's one of his greatest strengths is, number one, he cares about his players. He spends time and, and, and gets himself involved in getting to know these guys off the court. So when, when, when tough times happen or, or, you know, they need to be held accountable, he has no problem doing that and they have no problem accepting that because they know he cares. We're a lot more competitive now. I think we got a chip on our shoulder where we're, we're playing for something that, that, you know, really wasn't important to us in the beginning, I, I would say. But now, you know, having that chip on our shoulder, we feel like we got something to prove and, we, uh, and, and I think that's helping us compete better and, and go out and play harder. In addition to studio shows and stories featuring the athletes of Ball State, Ball State Sportslink produces live athletic events. Out of the Shadows assistant producer Brad Daly went all access with Sportslink as they prepared for the Eastern Michigan game.
All right, fellas, head up here. I want to talk about this for one second. I'm going to use it in a different way. They're playing the zone. I'm using it in the other term of everybody in here has played the game of basketball and has been in the zone at some point in your life. All right? At some point this season. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to close your eyes. <coughs> close your eyes, put your head down. I want you to take a second. I want you to think about a point in your season or your career. If you're a freshman, it could be this year, it could be high school, you name it. But I want you to go back to that time where you say you're playing the best basketball. Picture yourself in the gym, how you feel. Completely locked into the game. Every time you shoot, you know it's going in. The game is slowed down for you. How it feels when you play that way. And I want you to picture yourself out there tonight. And I want you to go back and I want you to think about the number of times that we worked out this summer, our entire team meeting at 8.30 every single morning for breakfast the entire summer, Mark, how hard you worked in the fall. Jesse, I want you to think about how hard you practiced for the last 10 days. CB, I want you to think about playing the best basketball of your life. And I want you to picture yourself out there tonight. You're not worried about tomorrow. You're not worried about yesterday. Being a team, being all in together, making incredible hustle plays, playing the best basketball of your life. Head up. See it, feel it, believe it, that something good is coming our way for all the hard work that we've had. Stay positive. Picture yourself out there playing the best basketball of your life, and I mean that. Let's go get it. Let's go, man. Let's go. Cardinals put Mark Allstork back in the starting lineup today, along with Jesse Berry for the shooting. Franco House, Majuk Majuk, and Chris Bond, the rest of them. So Xavier Turner will begin today's game on the bench. Cardinals win the tip. Bond goes to the rack. Shot gets stuffed, but the putback is there. Into the front court left, Berry dials a deep three and hits it. Boy, the Cards need that early. And here comes Lee for Eastern on the run out. Goes to the cup, runs into Berry, and he puts it through with a right. Ward, left corner, three, got it. Hand in his face. Katie Crowder takes it from Holmes, finds Turner, who hits an 18-footer, pull up in transition. Passes right for Ward, gives the tally quickly into the paint. Little underhanded layup, no, got his own board. Kicks back out, Ward wants three, and he's got it from the left wing. Kicks out, tally in the lane, out of control. He spins, but finishes. Thirty-five, twenty-nine at the break. Biggest thing I want you to know in this deal is right now, they have, they have a six-point lead. They have. 13 offensive rebound points. It's one of the worst things they do as a team. You say, what's the difference in the game right now? We're offensive rebounding. Great, we got 12. It's two, three guys on the glass. They don't rebound well. We know that. We're sending guys. We're doing a great job on that area. They have 13 second chance points. And you guys see it. There's a couple where our bigs are jumping for them. What are our guards doing? They're leaking out. They're leaking out. You've got to push Glenn Bryant back. He's long arms and he's big and he jumps. But they're getting second shots, and because we're starting to go this way, I'm telling you, they're delivering points. If we can control the glass, we're coming in here right now up two at halftime. We have to control the glass on that part of it. Mostly what they're doing is they're just clearing it out for this guy to drive middle. And they're going like crazy. Right now, Ray Lee has 13 points. He averages what, six, eight, ten. Average is 10. He's got 13 points in the first half. He's about two and a half times his average. He's missed three shots. Dude's getting to the rim every single time he catches the ball. Ball's right here in the slot. They're driving here. Here's what I want you to think about. When they have the slot, they're driving middle all the time. And their spacing is such that they have to drive middle. They can't drive baseline. 
Guy's got the ball in the slot. You, you have to play him, you know, play him understanding. They're always trying to drive the ball back middle. When they come over here and they pitch it to this guy, he's trying to drive the ball back middle. Understand that, and everybody else is in the out, making them think and recover. All right? Because it's our game. All yeah, is all right. 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 Put yourself in the zone, dude. Put yourself in that zone. All right. three. One, two, three. All, all right. Eastern on the run out. Ray lead in the cup, lays it off the glass and scores. Drives the lane. Nice pass to Berry, who's open. And he drains a three. Right in front of the bench. Harrison one on one with House. Got it with a horn. They love to go one on one with Dalen Harrison. Turner's with Sims at the top of it and Cole. Fires over it and bangs a three with palms in his face. Conference in the corner to answer a triple is pure for Ray Lee down the right side. Free throw line for Franco House. Kick out for Crowder. He launches and connects. Give him 10. Kid and Crowder. Right, Crowder forces him out. Passes for five to shoot. Harrison goes behind the back. Bryant finishes and he's fouled. That's a pretty pass from Dalen Harrison. 73 62 is our final today. 11 points, the difference for Eastern Michigan. I'm just going to give you my honest assessment as I always do. Thought we competed in the game. That's a very, very frustrating game to play in. They spread us out and they drove us like crazy. And they got the ball to the rim. And at the end of the day, there were 32 free throws. And you know what? There were probably a couple bad calls. But I'm telling you, they didn't shoot 32 free throws because of poor fishing. Maybe they should have shot 26. They should have shot 26 because they got the ball to the rim relentlessly. Relentlessly. And they were making plays at the rim. Offensive rebounds, we did that. Flip of it is, so did they. At halftime, they were 13 to five on the glass. And for us to beat that team, it's across the board. We defend to our ability in that game, we win. What I'm asking all you guys to do, we'll come in and learn from the film tomorrow. Stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. Let's have a great day Thursday. Let's have a great day Friday. Jesse did a good job today. I told you I could see that coming. I could. It's in the way you performed in the last nine or ten days. When you do that, it always comes. For you, I thought you did a good job. All right? So that's all I have, man. Stay positive. Keep your head up. Thursday, Friday, let's have a great day on Saturday here against Bowling Green. Just to lose it, you know, it gets frustrating, you know. Uh, you know, we can't we can't put one together, but uh, when we have, you know, it's felt great. You know, that feeling of uh, after the Buffalo game was great, you know, going to the locker room like that. And uh, after that after that day we had that feeling, it, it just felt like, you know, we need to we need to have this feeling more often. We need to we need to get it together and play harder. Coach Nelson is a real, uh, he's a great coach. You know, he played for, for Billy Donovan and his, his background as a player, both collegially and, and professionally, I think gives him a great knowledge set of the game. And then uh, he's just really passionate. You know, he's a, he's a competitor. He's a real gift to have on my staff because, uh, you know, he's played the game at a really high level and I think the guys all respect that. And um, he can teach the game, he really knows it. But I'm telling you, he wants to, he wants to win now. He's a competitor. I love that side of it. I love what he brings to practice every day, that element, because he's, he's so fiery. And, uh, so I want my players to be, you know, and for them to see someone who's, who's played at the level he, he does and he brings that energy every day to practice, I think is a big help. Well, obviously, uh, Coach Whitford, uh, as, a coaching, as a coaching staff, gives us assistant coaches, you know, a lot of freedom. Um, obviously, you got to recruit, you got to develop your players uh, on the court, off the court. Uh, from a personal standpoint, uh, you know, uh, part of my job is, is, is I'm our compliance liaison to, to the administration, um, you know, and he kind of breaks, you know, responsibilities like that up amongst our staff. But recruiting, coaching, player development, those are the main things that I do. He brings a lot of experience, obviously, coming from Florida, and, and he's been to a, a, a different places coaching as well. Uh, he brings a lot of experience, a lot of things. He brings a lot of passion as well, something I really noticed about him. He's always on fire, it seems like, in practice, and you know, he's really passionate about these guys getting better and practice being the way you know, Coach Rick wants it to be in the way it should be, the atmosphere. And he's, he really loves the guys, you know, he loves what he does, and you can tell by 
the way he coaches and the way it shows. So that's something I, you know, really respect and I actually look up to him in a lot of ways for that. I know what these guys are going through. You know, college basketball is a grind and these guys go through ups and downs and, and I went through a lot of the same feelings that these guys go through, um, you know, especially some of our younger guys. And, um, you know, just to have that experience, uh, I kind of have a feel for, for, for what to say to these guys to help guide them, uh, which has really helped me. Coach Nelson has, he has their respect. He has their respect because he can teach the game. And, uh, you know, when he tells you to do something, hey, he's done that thing a million times. And, um, you know, so he's, he's very fiery. He he's, gets after guys in a real good way. And, uh, and he goes out there, plays with the guys sometimes in practice. And by the way, he can still play. <laughs> and they know it. And uh, so he, uh, he, brings a, he brings a real element to me. He's still young. He's 32 years old. And he's associate head coach and uh, kind of speaks for his background that he's, he's as well versed as he is. Uh, he practices with us sometimes, you know, and, uh, and he really gets into guys. Um, he makes sure we're, go we're going hard on every play. You know, he doesn't let anybody back down. I think that's a, a good strength that Coach Nelson has. Um, even when he's out there playing, he competes his hardest. You know, he goes hard because he wants to get us his best weekend, so he doesn't back off. You know, he's. He's still a good player, really. Um, he makes good decisions. His IQ is, is great uh, for the game, and uh, he's a really good player. I'm confident in saying Coach Nelson could still hang with Jesse. He, uh, Coach Nelson could play. He was an All-American. I mean, there's 10 of those in the game. And it is, he's still out there quite a bit, and I'm telling you, he can, he can still do it. Senior Jesse Berry broke the Ball State record for career three-pointers against Bowling Green. He surpassed former Ball State teammate and current manager Jawan Scaife to top the record book with 207 career three-pointers. I knew he was going to break it just a matter of time. So when he broke it, it didn't surprise me, you know. But I told him that he would break it that, you know, that night, of course. And uh, we talked about it a little bit and just kind of laughed about it. But it wasn't anything that caught me off guard by surprise, you know. But I was, you know, happy for him and, and happy that he's, um, yeah, somebody that at least broke that record was a friend of mine and somebody that came up and played with me as well. It means a lot. I mean, it shows, you know, how hard I've worked over the years, you know, getting my shots up, you know, always staying in the gym. But also, you know, it shows the good teammates I have at the same time because uh, they're always screening for me and, and they're getting me open to get these good shots. Where I grew up from and how I am, you know, I wasn't supposed to be here by any means. But um, thanking God and everybody else around me, you know, I, I got the opportunity and I got a chance and I just made the best of it. Hands off for a driving house who takes it to the rack and scores. Franco House getting physical. Bond drives athletically down the right side. He finishes. Baseline drive. Bond throws out Barry into a three. Bang! All-time leader in Ball State history, Jesse Barry. You know, to see him have that breakthrough and to just stick with it, you know, and, and, and stay the course and overcome some things uh, that he needed to overcome. You know, it's been a pleasure as a coach. That's part of the reason why you do this is to see a guy like him uh, flourish and, and have the kind of, you know, last two weeks like he's had. He's, he's, he's struggled for half or two-thirds of the year. He and I probably disagreed on some things early, but he's, he's, uh, he's playing well and he's, he's really representing himself in Ball State well right now. And I'm happy and proud of him. Barry drives it through the lane. Jesse off the glass, his first bucket of the second half. The shot was from outside the paint. Turner, a three. They left him open on the right wing. It's Turner into the front court. Two seconds left, one second. Turner gets up a shot, no good. Turner wants a foul, no call. And Bowling Green has won. 66-64, BG's the winner. Bowling Green game, you know, we played well enough to win. I was disappointed in the final two possessions, really, for them. When we had a three-point lead, CB got the steal that uh, they called a, that was called a foul and cut it to one, and then we got a good shot and missed it, and they scored in transition. Had a crucial, crucial time in the game, and um, and I was disappointed in our ability to close the game out. I was I was pleased with the way we played. I thought we played well enough to win, but um, but it was that crunch time for us. It really hurt us. You know, it's been, a, it's been a tough season, obviously, with the win-loss record being what it is. But uh, I'll tell you one thing I'm really proud of is, you know, we have senior night coming up on Saturday. I'm, honestly, I'm really proud of the, the seniors. You know, Tyler Cook has been hurt all year. It's been a hard year for him, but he continues to fight. Hasn't played very much because of his hips. But uh, 
Chris Bond is having his best year of his career. He's playing really good basketball. He's on pace to graduate this spring. To me, he's really gotten better. He scored his thousandth point the other night and uh, is putting himself in position to be successful when he leaves here. Jesse Berry, I feel like, is doing the best he's ever done, uh, both on the court, in the classroom, off the court, you name it. His total development as a person. He's also on pace to graduate this spring, and then Majuk has averaged a double-double. And then the fifth senior, Kenyon Crowder, who who never uh, didn't even play on his high school team. <laughs> he was a manager on his high school team, and again, he's going to graduate. He's really been a great leader for us, has stepped up on the court. And, uh, and all five of those guys, they haven't quit fighting at all. Uh, I want to finish strong, and you know, I want to go out, you know, with a bang at least, and just say, you know, you know, I, I gave them all, you know. I've been proud of the way they fought. I think that's a real positive for us. We are going to win here. It's just a matter of time. You know, uh, we got everything we need. We got a great arena. You know, we got great support from the administration. You know, uh, I think you can really recruit, which is a big, big piece. Maybe the most important piece. You know, I think you can get players, very good players, to Ball State University. And Ball State's got a name and tradition. You know, you go out and recruit and you talk about Ball State, people know, you know, know the name Ball State. So um, I think all those factor into, to, you know, the process and the culture that Coach Whitford's created and our staff's created. Well, we've recruited, you know, we've signed five. Uh, we got Jeremiah Davis in our program sitting out. We've signed four high school players uh, that are all, all, in my opinion, got a chance to be terrific players here. I think it'll be a, it has a chance to be a really special recruiting class. And um, it's the nature of college basketball is, you know, as those guys leave, these guys are coming in and they got some big shoes to fill in. And, uh, but I'm confident they can fill it. And Jeremy Tyler, Rashawn Richardson, Francis Kiapwe, Sean Sellers, we're all uh, guys that we fought hard to get in the summer to get to come here to Ball State, and, and uh, they're going to have an opportunity to contribute very early, and uh, they're going to have to step up, but they can. That's why we recruited them. The championship culture is, in my opinion, you know, you, you got to expect to win. You know, there's expectation level there, and you know, you, coming into a situation like this, you know, we, we have tradition, but the tradition is, you know, uh, 20 years ago or so. Uh, we got to create that, you know, again. And, you know, we got to expect to win every single time we step out on that court. And, you know, I, I tell our guys, you're, you're not only playing for the guys that you're playing with at this moment, but you're playing for everybody else who played here at Ball State. You know, everybody who put on that jersey. And at Florida, those guys today, you know, the number one team in the country this week, those guys aren't just playing for those guys beside them. They're playing for Udonis Haslam and Mike Miller and, you know, guys like myself and Joe Kim Noah, guys who built it. You know, we still take pride in what those guys are doing. And sometimes when you're going through it as a player, um, you know, you kind of lose perspective of that. So, you know, our guys got to understand they're not just playing for themselves. They're playing for all those banners that are hanging in Worthen Arena. And, you know, uh, they got to take pride in what they're doing. That by, by culture, what we're really talking about is the, is the work ethic in the program, by how hard guys practice. Coach Krzyzewski has a great line that, uh, that a championship culture is one where players are accountable to players. With a play, it's not just the coaches teaching the culture, it's actually been absorbed by the players. They believe in it and then can hold each other accountable for it. And uh, we're not there yet by any stretch, but we've, we've progressed in that way where I feel like uh, when the guys come to practice, they understand it's a real commitment that uh, they got to bring it and work it there every day, edit, that uh, the lifestyle off the court is a really big part of it, how you eat, how you take care of your body, your commitment to your game, and uh, being what we call a pro's pro. And I feel like we've, we've certainly gotten better in all of those areas and something we can really build on in the future. You know, one thing Coach Whipper, Coach Whipper has a great plan, you know, and he's all about the process and, and recruiting off the court, uh, on the court, and from a player development standpoint, offensively, defensively, there's a plan for everything we do. You know, we just got to, you know, stick to that plan and, and, and stay the process. And, you know, wins and losses will take care of itself. But at the end of the day, you know, as players, those guys have to truly believe and expect to win every single time they step on that floor. And it can't be about themselves. You know, you, you got to play for the guy beside you and, uh, you know, for your teammates. But the offseason, this, this offseason is going to be really important for us because uh, obviously we're not, you know, we need to get a lot better and we know that. So there's certain guys, it, it, the offseason is a time for individual games to get better. There's, a, there's an expression that teams are made in the wintertime and players are made in the summertime. And it's, uh, it's our time where we really focus on individual skill improvement, the guys becoming better shooters, better passers, better ball handlers, and, um, and then getting stronger in the weight room, bigger, faster, stronger. But the development in those two areas in the summer, we want ours. If there's 351 Division I teams, we want to improve more than the other 350 by a long shot. Got to get a lot better.